Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on DarkSack. Today we're going to talk about beginner certificate pathing. So what you need to take as far as certificates in order to properly break into the information, uh, information security field or InfoSec. So we'll go ahead and jump right in. All right, a uh, quick introduction to this. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more red focused, but by and large, when you're starting out, certificates are kind of general. So it doesn't really matter as much, uh, especially for the two that I'm the two big ones I'm going to recommend in this video. So, well, it's a little bit more red focused. These can pretty easily become defensive if you wanted to go into, uh, for instance, forensics or uh, work in a sock and do defense that way. Uh, the these will all work for you. Uh, this is not a certificate review. This is just based on my experiences in industry. This is kind of a bang for buck thing. Um, your mileage may vary on this. And I'll talk about this a little bit more later. Uh, there are some caveats as we go throughout this, but this is just my experiences. Uh, as far as updates go to this video, I'm going to attempt to make yearly updates as things change in industry to help keep this video relevant. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, this is going to be the 2020 version and we'll get a 2021 version going uh, probably end of next year or so. Do I really need certifications? Uh, this is something that I actually get asked a lot. Um, and, and this is yes and no. Uh, certifications match up with experience to prove that you actually know your stuff. Uh, there was actually a Reddit thread that I was on the other day that someone was asking exactly this. And um, it, when it, while you can say that I know how to do all these things, having a certification, especially something like the OSCP, or if you're moving into management doing the CISSP, it really demonstrates that you do know what's going on. You know the uh, the back policy, and you can actually demonstrate it, especially in the case of practical exams. Um, however, your mileage may vary on this. Sometimes people get into positions just because of merit alone. However, it's not very common for that. Typically, you do need those certifications, so your mileage may vary here, but make sure that it matches up with your experience. All right, one quick thing I want to talk about, and this is something that I'm only briefly going to touch upon. Uh, this is one of the baselines that I actually use uh, just for consistency in what certifications are accepted uh, widely across industry. This is something that has been approved by the Department of Defense. This is the uh, 8570 baseline certifications, um, and I'll have a link to this in the video description as well as uh, with the slides, and the slides will all be linked in the video description below. This is a baseline of certificates approved for people that work in uh, the Department of Defense in the United States in InfoSec. It's pretty well updated, and I like to use it as a baseline of what is widely accepted in industry. So pairing that with what uh, my experiences are, it ends up working out very well. And uh, let's see, this is a brief little snippet of the table. This is not anywhere near all of it, but here we can see that there's different levels of certifications that they're looking for. So, for example, you can see the Security Plus right there in the middle, um, and then the CISSP that I mentioned over there on the right-hand side. But this is an excellent uh, metric for uh, if something has been widely accepted by industry. If you see it on here, it's probably a good certification to get. And actually, one of the things I'm noticing now that they've added is that CISA Plus here in the middle. This is a relatively new shirt. Uh, if you see it on here it's probably worth your time investing. Uh, probably worth investing your time in it, rather. So recommended ordering. Um, this is just going to be my topical ordering of things. Uh, I recommend going for your Sec Plus first. Uh, this is your Security Plus from CompTIA. This is a nice general uh, getting started certification that it establishes a baseline for what you know. Um, it's going to teach you a lot of just general security topics that you need, and we'll get a little bit more into that later. Um, and then I recommend going for your OSCP. Um, I do have a middle section here, which is miscellaneous educational certs. These are various certifications that you can do that help you get up to that OSCP level. I see a lot of people do e-learn security certs here uh, just because those are newer, and while those are great certifications, uh, and again, we'll talk about this a little bit more later in a dedicated section. Um, Going through these various uh, activities, and for example, Trihackney's Offensive Path, you can learn a lot. Uh, this is something that I recommend taking a couple of these. Sometimes these are referred to um, as demi shirts, uh, but taking a couple of these, uh, especially if it's something that's up and coming, like an e-learn security shirt, 
that's going to be worth its weight after a little bit, and it can be worth that additional investment, but it's going to help you learn and get up to that OSCP level. All right, Security Plus. Um, first thing a lot of people ask is, why not the Networks Plus or the A-plus certifications? Uh, a lot of times you don't actually need those for security. They're great certifications to have, but they're more targeted at the general, well, I, I guess the general um, information uh, technology. So more of just IT overall. You don't really need them for security. Uh, they're great to know, and they can be really helpful if you're going through and learning a lot of this and you want to get certifications. And for example, if you're a student, you can get discounts on a lot of those. As you're going through, if you want to go through and not uh, have these uh, sort of bench, uh, these various uh, points that are captured in your learning career that you say that, hey, I've got the A plus now. I'm going to go for the networks plus. You can sort of um, benchmark your learning that way, which can be helpful. And it's particularly helpful if you are trying to get into just a generic internship. Um, having those shows that you're willing to put in the time and the money to go and get those certifications. But for security, they're not as necessarily helpful. Again, your mileage may vary for this, and we'll talk about a little bit more about uh, maybe your bosses. You need something else later on, but that's my general thoughts on that. Um, what about the CEH? Uh, this is something that, unfortunately, this is a little bit more of a, I guess, controversial certification within security. The CEH, um, it's more of a, uh, a lot of people have seen it as a, you need to memorize a bunch of stuff, and then it's good enough for the exam, so you can essentially brain dump. Uh, that has been the sentiment for a while on security, and while I know that they're working to improve the exam, and I know that the CEH practical has been added, it's something that for now, while I haven't necessarily seen a bad experience with it, I think that it's worthwhile to invest your time into a different certification. So specifically the SEC Plus. Um, why not the pen test plus? This is something that's really new from CompTIA. I've actually, I've taken this certification. I had a great experience with it. I actually genuinely, genuinely enjoyed it. Um, and it was more focused than the security plus. This is something I want to be able to recommend over the security plus specifically for folks that get into security. Uh, the only issue right now is it's very, very new. I, from seeing that the CISA plus is now recognized by the government, I would say that this is definitely something that is probably worthwhile investing your time in especially as we go into 2021. This is probably something that is going to be worth more than the Security Plus, but for now, because this is so new, I would recommend the Sec Plus just because it's going to be more widely recognized. Educational certificates. Um, the big one here that I want to hit on is eLearn Security. This is something that I do not have explicit experience with myself. Uh, this is something that I'm going to try to take a couple of their certifications soon to have a better idea of what I can recommend there. These, I, I've heard really, really good things about them. Overall, everyone that I've talked to that has taken an eLearn security cert has said that, yeah, it was a great experience and they do a really, really good job teaching. This is something that if um, you are going through and looking for a nice certification to learn, uh, especially because these guys do such a great job teaching, I would recommend going through and taking uh, this certification on your way to something like the OSCP, just because it's almost an on-ramp there. Um, and I put down there the EPTS. I might have that uh, wrong. Um, that certification, their base level pen testing certification has been very well received. I've seen overall that they're doing a really good job and they have been working constantly to get those to be better, which is fantastic. But I recommend for now, because they're so new, and again, you have that recognition issue, I would use these as an on-ramp, but again, your mileage may vary. The OSCP, I'm not going to beat this uh, into the ground because we talked about it in a previous video, and if you want more information, check out my OSCP-specific uh, video. This is arguably the widest recognized certification in security. This is, uh, if you have an OSCP, you're OSCP certified for life, and it, it really does mean something. Um because it's for life, you don't have to worry about renewing it, which is fantastic. Uh, it really does a great job of teaching that try harder and uh, learning how to handle adversity uh, with time constraints. So specifically, how do you handle that? How do you handle pressure? And things that uh, aren't necessarily taught as well with other certifications right now. I know that's something that, again, other places are working on. Um, this does a really good job of teaching that, and it's 
learning how to handle that is something that you need to know with uh, working in pen testing, just because it's such a common issue to come across. Uh, it is widely regarded as an industry standard and heavily recognized. Uh, this is something that everyone knows it. Everyone strives for it. If you have it, it's something you're very proud of. It, it's a great cert overall. And again, check out my OSCP video if you want some more information here. What about SANS? Um, SANS, this is something that if you can do it, uh, you should. Uh, but it's incredibly expensive. They have great content. I've taken um, a couple SANS courses myself, and I've had a really, really good time. Their teachers are great. They really do have probably the best in the business as far as teachers go, and they really pride themselves on that, and rightfully so. Uh, if you can take SANS, do it. And as you saw, some of those certifications from SANS are on the DOD list. Uh, there's actually a lot from SANS on that list. Just these are, they're not cheap. You're probably looking at several thousand dollars per certification as compared to the OSCP is a little over a thousand dollars, which is, uh, you know, when that's a fifth of the price, it's difficult for everyone to go through with that. Um, I mean, you are getting your money's worth out of SANS just because they are really, really, really good at teaching. But again, it's, it's not everyone has the opportunity to spend that much money on a certification. Um, if you are still in school, there's one opportunity I want to talk about here. It's the SANS CyberStart Fast Track Program. This is a competition that SANS does on a yearly basis for uh, students. Uh, so you can go through, and if you're in school, even if you're just taking a couple classes at like a community college or something, you can go through and compete in this competition, and people that are finalists in it get uh, SANS scholarships, which is several SANS certifications. So absolutely worthwhile checking out. If you are in school, this is something that, if it's going on right now, you should be involved with it. But my employer told me to get something else. Um, again, this is where your mileage may vary a lot. Different employers find different certifications valuable. If there's a specific place that you want to work, it is worthwhile to go and ask them, shoot an email over to HR and say, hey, what certifications do you want me to have? What do you look for when you're hiring people? You can look at job postings for where you want to work. Or if you have a position that you want to get, you can look at those certifications and sort of decide from there. So it gives you a lot of um, insight into what you want. And again, you should get the things that um, your employer finds valuable. Uh, if you are concerned about missing things from certifications, what I would recommend doing is look up reviews and figure out what different certifications might be missing. So for example, if you wanted to take the CEH over the SEC plus, look up the difference between the certifications and figure out what you're missing so you can go back and learn that later on. Is that'll help make sure that you're more well-rounded in your career. Other certifications I haven't mentioned. Um, different certifications offer different learning experiences. It's a bit of a cop-out answer, but I mean, it's the truth. You can take a bunch of different certifications Different teachers are going to teach you different things. Try to take the certifications that make the most sense to you. Again, do your homework, look up reviews, make smart choices with what you're going to buy. These are just the general certifications that I've seen that are recognized pretty widely in industry. Uh, beyond certifications, um, this is something that is a little bit beyond the scope of the video, but I get asked this a lot. Uh, what's the secret trick? And uh, <laughs> it's not really secret, it's getting involved. Um, Beyond certifications, if you really want to seal the deal with getting a uh, position, you need to get involved. You don't, so for things like CTFs or cyber defense competitions, CDCs here, uh, getting involved with that shows that you were actively invested in the security community. Uh, being involved with Try Hack Me or Hack the Box and having a rank in your profile that's pretty good. So for example, if you get up to like Hacker or Pro Hacker and Hack the Box, that looks pretty cool. And that shows, especially if I'm the one doing the interview for you, I, I want to have you brag about those things because it shows that you're actively involved in there. Uh, odds are, if I hear that you're active online, I'm going to ask you what's your favorite attack that you've done. So, for example, if you've done something like Zip Slip, I, I want to know how you found out about that. I want to know how you research. Uh, it shows that you're involved. And same thing with competitions in general. So going and doing CTFs, it shows that you care about being involved in the information security uh, community. It shows that you actively are going out to learn. You get a lot from that. And it shows the people that are interviewing you who are often active in the community as well. It shows that, you know, they can trust that you're going to continue go and learn uh, because that's a lot of what going full time and working in the field ends up being. Contribute to open source projects. Uh, so there's a couple here that I'm going to call out specifically. However, 
you can work on pretty much anyone you want. I just recommend making sure that it's at least loosely involved with the information security community. It shows that uh, you know how to code. It shows that you can contribute to a group project. Overall, it's it's great. Um, two specifically that I'm looking at are the Try Hack Me Discord bot. This is a project that I actively run, and we'll have our subreddit bot soon. This is written in Python 3 right now. If you want to get involved with the project, this is a great one. You just got to talk to myself or Horshark on the Try Hack Me Discord, and we can get you all involved with that. Otherwise, there's Syfy, which is an awesome, awesome project, but these are just uh, general projects. That one's actually made by uh, one of the Try Hack Me mods, B. Uh, fantastic guy, along with a couple other Try Hack Me members. I believe Smack Hack is also involved with that. Um, those are great examples of projects. If you want something sort of, of a as a litmus test for what a good project looks like, I would take a look at those. Um, if you're going out and making your own tool as well, like the mayor has, uh, I believe it's Threader 3000, I want to say. Awesome, awesome project. It shows that he's actively going out and trying to contribute back to the information or infosec community, um, and it's fantastic. So things like that, it really does show that you're involved. Um, and again, show that you're involved. Uh, create a website, advertise yourself. LinkedIn and Twitter can be great here. Uh, again, be careful how much you're sharing just because you don't want to dox yourself. But, I mean, if you're doing something cool, go brag about it a little bit. I want to know what you're doing. If you have something really cool, post it in the comments or, you know, hop in the Discord and say, hey, I'm doing something really cool. Is it shows, you know, people like me and other people in InfoSec that, hey, you're a mover and shaker. You're out there getting stuff done. Uh, and then do, do write-ups. If you don't necessarily want to contribute to a project or, you know, think that might not be right for you, um, one, I would reconsider just because those are fantastic. And believe me, people will help you as long as you're willing to learn and do a little bit of research. If you don't want to go that direction or if you want to branch out from that direction and do even more do write-ups, they don't have to be complicated. They don't have to be great. What I what we're looking for with write-ups is that you're actively, again, contributing back to the community and you're going through and you're trying your best and you're trying to improve every single time. And beyond that, you're taking that feedback and incorporating it actively into your next write-up. So you're trying to improve yourself. Uh, the, these, as I mentioned before, we're talking about like your favorite hack. Uh, these also help you prepare for interviews because it shows that you have writing talent and they demonstrate that you not only can write about what you're doing, but you actively understand what's going on. So writing about maybe why an exploit works or why it happened, things like that. Some additional resources. This is something I'll have linked in the video description as well. And I only have a very small part of the chart shown here. This is a certification chart created by, I'm going to butcher his name, uh, Syncure Life. Uh, Awesome, awesome dude. Um, I haven't looked into a lot of what he's done other than this. I probably should. Uh, he created a security certification progression chart, uh, which when you're reading it, it's from top or from starting at the bottom, read upwards, and you can sort of see like how things are uh, measured as far as difficulty and weight within security. So you here you can see a little bit at the top um, where uh, you have some of your higher certifications like that, the CISP. Um, it, it gives you a general idea of what you can look for in information security. Uh, this is something that, again, you can see it's from 2019, so it's not necessarily the most up-to-date. He might have a more updated version of this now, uh, so I do recommend taking a look for that, and I'll try to link it in the video description if I can. Uh, but it provides a really good overall uh, idea of how things are weighted in InfoSec. And there's some other stuff in here, too, like there's programming and whatnot. So great chart. Again, I'll have it linked in the video description, and it's linked in the slides, too. Um, as far as my videos go, uh, for the InfoSec Primer series, I'm going to try to give you milestones in the playlist for when I suggest taking these, uh, as far as Sec Plus goes, this is something that if you're thinking about getting a certification, go out and just buy a Sec Plus book, make sure that it's recent, make sure it has good reviews, just go for it. If you have questions, you're welcome to ask in the dark sec discord, we'll do your bet. Myself and the other members, I can promise we'll do our best to try to help you out. But, um, this is something that I recommend just going for, but otherwise you can go through and just hang out and just start going for it. I uh, don't stand on the edge of the diving board. You either get in the pool or you need to back off and rethink, you know, just, just make sure that you're moving forward. Um, with the sec plus, again, the repetition of the material here is going to be key offers a lot of baseline knowledge. And again, the security triad is just a nice little baseline thing to know about. And you can build on this for later certifications. Otherwise, Thanks for watching. Um, if you want to see more content like this in the InfoSec Primary Series, uh, subscribe to me on YouTube. 
Uh, follow me on Twitter for more updates, and otherwise uh, join the DarkSec Discord again linked below, and I will see you guys next time.